this is um, period four, computer science, with chapter six. Oops. Okay. So six point one is the while loop. Basically, the while loop is um, a loop executes instructions repeatedly until the condition is not true anymore. So if you have an infinite loop, for example, it would just keep on repeating and repeating until, well, infinitely. So you don't want to do that. And then the statements in the while loop are called the body of the while statement. So basically, um, when you declare a variable inside the loop body, the variable is created for each time it runs. So basically, like, even though you might say that, um, for example, here balance is zero, if it's true, then it'll go to the statement and then it will. Here, I don't know how to. Yeah, use the, the, the tools, yeah. Okay, so then it'll be like balance plus interest is a new balance. So basically, it was zero in the beginning, but if it's less than target balance, um, it gets added to the interest. It's in the here from the state interest number is three. The new balance is three. So as long as it's true, it'll keep on going, and then it'll keep on like adding and changing value accordingly. What happens if what's inside parentheses is not true? Then it doesn't execute anymore. So where would the where would the uh, compiler go if what's inside parentheses is not true? We just move on, it would skip the while loop, it would ignore it. If it, the condition isn't true, everything inside of it yeah, is, is neglected yeah. by the compiler. Right, so show me, show me using the tools where it would go. To the, here. Speed right here? Right. And then it would, and it would skip so the next part. line right below the yeah. bracket. And oh, there's okay, no more lines anyway. From the code determinant. Okay. So everything is dependent, uh, running inside the loop, everything is dependent on that Boolean condition that's in parentheses after the while statement, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let me do like an example. So basically, for the first example, you can see that once um, the sum is 10, the condition is false. So it no longer applies, then it would just skip to the next lines. Then second example, um, it will never reach 10 just because here it's like the way that it's Incorrect, so somewhere well, point, to Camilla, point using the tools, okay? Because someone looking at the screencast doesn't know what you're pointing Oh, okay. So basically you're subtracting from two sums, so then you just get this, and you're never going to, it's just going to keep on going and going. So that's not very effective. And then the third one, um, the statement is false in the beginning, so it will just never go there because it's false. The next one, um, it's just saying in like a common example that the programmer might think that like they're, what they're trying to say is not what it actually does. So you have to be careful with that. And the last one, you have a yeah, semicolon here, which is incorrect syntax because it's just not gonna it messes with it. What what is the uh, what is the effect of that semicolon? Um, it's just like it it just stops there. It doesn't really need the statement. Yeah, it, it kind of separates the. Um, the while statement that separates it from the body of the of yeah. the loop, right? So, do you end up getting? Um, it says here, uh, it runs forever, checking whether the sum is less than ten and doing nothing. Right, right. So what happens is it just, it since sum is zero, um, and it's saying while well, sum is less than ten, well zero is always going to be less than ten, right? And there's no way for you to increment sum. It'll just keep on running the loop indefinitely, right? Yeah. Okay. It's not a mistake. And then here, common errors. Um, wait. So it says, um, I guess the first one says, um, don't think I'll be there yet. Like, don't become, I guess, annoyed that the loop isn't going where you want it to be because you're the one that makes the loop. Right. Second, infinite loops. We talked about that. And then off by one errors, you might put like x equals zero, but in reality x equals one, you just like, have to be careful about where to start. Okay. So. And then the next section, um, hand tracing. So basically, um, it's like you you do the code as you go, just to make sure that it's working, and you can avoid like the off by one errors and stuff, because you're doing it yourself, it's paper. And then, for example, in here, um, so int n equals 1729, and then you just keep on going in the while loop until eventually, and becomes zero, and it doesn't. So 
So so give me like the first give me the first two outputs of the body of that loop. Okay, um let's see. Alright, so the loop repeats definitely well not indefinitely until n is greater than zero. N starts at seventeen twenty nine. Um so so it should not even run the loop. Yeah, because it's greater than zero. Well, and it's greater than zero. So what happens is the compiler skips over the while loop. Once it reads the first line, while parentheses n is greater than zero, it realizes that that condition uh, is satisfied. Oh, I'm sorry. While yeah, n is yeah. great. Okay, so then it goes through yeah. the body. That's, I'm sorry, I don't mind. misread it the other way around. All right, so then it goes inside int digit equals n times 10. Or, or n mod 10. N mod 10, excuse me. So yeah, it takes nine. the remainder after you divide it by 10, so there's 9. And then. Um, it adds sum, to the sum plus digits, so the, the sum now becomes nine because right. the previous sum was zero. Right. So n equals n divided by ten, and then it redefines n as um, well. That's actually going to be an error, I think, because n is declared as an int. But if you're dividing it by ten, it's not going to give you an integer value. Actually, it wouldn't give an error. It would, well, it, and it, it's it would truncate. It would truncate. Yeah. yeah, it would truncate. It would truncate, right? So now the new value of n is seventeen twenty nine divided by ten, which would just be one seventy two. Yeah. Okay, and then it runs that process again. You yeah. see, it does the whole thing again. It's already here. Oh, there you go. Oh, I did it there. Okay, so you circle that, and yeah. uh, that that that's so actually and your output, and then until n becomes zero. Finally. Once n becomes zero, then yeah. the it, compiler yeah. stops looking for the while and goes down to system dot out dot print sum and gives you the value of what the sum was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Next. Okay, wait, I'm almost done. So even though you can get the same answer by doing the code, um, <laughs> yeah, it's effective because again, it's you're more careful about it. You can check it easier, and then it's powerful it to be for any errors. And then, okay, um, six point three. So the second type of loop uh, in this chapter is the for loop, which is just an extension of the while loop. You don't really have to think of it as anything different because the way it operates is continually until a certain condition is reached, just like the while loop. However, since the while loop, basically what a for loop is, I'll explain, is it's just a while loop, while loop that's controlled by a counter. Meaning you create a variable called counter, and every time, or whatever you call it, but it's a counter variable, and it increments or does something every time, or decrements by one, or whatever it is, each time until a certain condition is reached. But the thing is, while loops so often use counters that they decided to make its own loop that has it included in the condition the syntax. That way it's much easier, much more efficient, it's quicker to do. So rather than have to create all these different variables for the while loop and make it a condition, the um, syntax of the condition in the for loop includes all of that. It makes it just kind of streamlined. Um, and uh, yeah, they're called count control loops because while loops can be event controlled. So I, I kind of look at for loop as a, as a subset of while loop since they're all while loops are event controlled, which can include a counter, but a for loop is exclusive to a counter. Um, so it has three conditions inside of the parentheses where after it says four parentheses, you've got three conditions. The first one is the declaration of your counter variable. Uh, most commonly it's i. So you just say int i equals zero, int i equals one. However you're counting, if you're counting down or up, whatever it is, you declare it in the first condition. Then comma, the second condition is the limit for the counter. What What is the deciding factor of whether or not the for loop will continue to run. So it might be i less than 10, meaning it'll continue to do this loop each time until i finally reaches 10, and then once it does, it'll move on. So just like a while loop, except a little more specific to counters as opposed to just any, to any type of event. Uh, then you do another comma, and the third condition of the loop is the action. What, what happens to the counter each time the loop is run so that you can finally eventually reach that limit? Okay, so give me the example that you just gave me with i at starting at 1, less than 10, and let's say incrementing by 1. Give me that in Java code above there. All right. Use red. I think red would be yeah, better. Right. All right, so we'll start 4, just like you would in any loop, and then parentheses for the three conditions. So the first one, the declaration. I'll do int i uh, equals, let's say, 0. Okay. Comma. Uh, semicolon. I'm sorry, semicolon. Oh yeah, they're all separated by semicolon. Um, counter limit. So let's say i is less than uh, or equal to 10. And 
then the third third thing is the action. So let's say i plus plus, meaning each time the loop is run, i increments by one. Now there's only one issue here, Daniel. Hmm. Uh, less than or equal, the way you have it written okay. is not uh, a, a appropriate oh, that's, Java that's syntax. That's not Java syntax. I'm right. sorry. That's how um, would you how would you do it? Syntax, like this. There you go. Okay. Exactly. So then inside here you have the body of your loop. Da -da 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 -da. It can do anything. It can say you know, uh, print out this, da, da 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 whatever it is that's relevant. It's just a way of keeping track of the whole incrementation of the counter variable and everything without having to have it somewhere else or inside the loop like you would if you did while. Right. Uh, so actually, my next slide shows some examples, but this is just how you set up the condition, and you can have anything inside the body. Right. And it's very flexible, too, what you do with the condition. That's the most common type where i increments each time and you use i, but... You can have any sort of action happening. So here I show you a couple of them. Um, I did leave a dot. Does that bother me? Okay. Um, so the first one here, int counter equals one. They made a variable. They didn't use i. They used counter. Uh, they made it one, and they made the condition same thing, less than equal to ten, incrementing each time. That's the basic form. Uh, and then in the body of the loop, it doesn't matter what you put. They just put printing out the counter just so they could have something in there. Uh, so the second one. Uh, is your condition they kind of they kind of move step by step at a time. So the next one does counter less than or equal to ten. Okay, that's correct. If the if the compiler checks counters variable and checks the value, realizes that it's less than ten, then it works into the loop uh, and it does whatever it does. Third thing it does is it executes the body of the loop. So it doesn't actually look at this yet. First it goes to the loop and it prints out counter. So at this point counter would still be one when it prints it out. It hasn't yet increased it. Um, it does whatever it needs to do. Then, final step is to increment the counter, make it go up one, and then the compiler starts over again, looks back at the for loop, and says, all right, now this kind is counter less than 10, and if it is, at this point it's only 2, so it would go right back to the top and do it again. Uh, it's sort of the same way a while loop runs, it just has extra conditions inside of um, the parentheses there to make sure that it's eventually stopping, that it reaches some value. So here's a couple examples of what you can do and how flexible you can be with your conditions. Um, over here on the left, you see different types of for loops, different types of conditions. Uh, I can be any value, and I can anything can happen to I. So the first one shows I being incremented each time until it reaches a value. But let's say you want it to count down. You want it to do something until some certain variable reaches zero. You can do that the same way. I minus minus does the same thing. You just have to change your conditions uh, accordingly. Uh, and then they show you some other examples. Uh, and the third line down, you see i equals i plus 2. That takes the previous value of i and just adds 2 to it instead of 1. Uh, and it can be any number, i plus 2, i plus 7, whatever it is. They showed you the same thing down below it, i times 2. Uh, so you can, you, use, you can even use, for example, math.pow. You can yeah. you oh, yeah. use any of the functions of the math You can do any math to it to, to change the value. And to change the value of your counting. Uh, of your counting. So that at some point it will eventually reach or exceed the value you have in your condition, which will then move on, the, the compiler will move on. Uh, and the last example shows you how you can have your condition, your um, your limit, be something that's not just an integer value. So that says when i is less than the length of string str. So whatever scenario it is, depending on your, your code and what you need it to run, uh, any condition can be true. It doesn't just have to be you know, int less than the value of some number. It could be anything. So it could be the length of the string, uh, the you know, number at this index of whatever it is in the string. So uh, it's very flexible, and it's just a way of keeping track of things through counters without having to create a while loop and all sorts of other stuff. Okay, okay let me let me just pause it right there.